Hi everybody, it's Miss Aviva from the Ridgefield Public Library in Ridgefield, New Jersey, coming to you with another online story time. We are going to read two really fun books that I've been waiting for a chance to read to you. They are both about bears outside. And I know it's kind of hard for us to go outside these days, but hopefully they'll give you some ideas for ways that you can explore your own backyards or the places that you are able to go. We're going to start with Bear Sees Colors, written and illustrated by Karma Wilson and Jane Chapman, and published by Margaret K. McElderry Books. Here we go. <laughs> mouse and Bear, see there's Mouse and Bear, are walking. They are chitter-chatter talking. So much for them to do. And the bear sees blue! Whoa, take a look at all these blue things. Look at this blue picture. Blue flowers by the trail. Blue berries. Blue pail. Blue, blue everywhere. Can you spy blue with bear? What blue things do you see? There's, there's blue water, and there's blue fish, and butterflies, and dragonflies. Do you like blue? Along the trail hops hair. Howdy ho there, mouse and bear. Hair points up ahead, and the bear sees red. Red blossoms, red cherries, red juicy raspberries. Red, red everywhere. Can you spy red with bear? Wow, I see all these beautiful poppy flowers and raspberries, and look. Can you see down here, there's some, some little red mushrooms. Never eat the little red mushrooms. They will make you very sick. They're fun to look at, but never, ever eat them or touch them, okay? Now, Badger's at the pond with his old galoshes on. It's a good thing he's wearing those boots to keep his feet dry at the pond. Look there, Badger bellows! And the bear sees. Can you guess what color? Yellow! Drippy, sticky, oh-so-yummy honeycombs with yellow honey. Yellow, yellow everywhere. Can you find it just like there? Let's see, there's some yellow flowers. And who's this? Yellow bumblebees. Gophers out with mole. They're on a little stroll. Bear spots them by the stream, and the bear sees what color? Green! Green mint for making tea. Mmm. Green and tasty sweet peas. Green, green everywhere. Can you spy green with bear? Raven, that's her, owl. There's Owl and Wren lay a picnic in the glen. The friends all gather round and the bear sees brown. Chocolate cake, brown and sweet. Brown cookies, such a treat. Brown eyes, brown hair. Friendly, fluffy. Brown bear! Colors, colors everywhere. Can you find colors just like bear? Well, let's see if we can find some of the colors that we saw in the book in this picnic. We see there's blue fish and red berries and green peas and yellow honey and there's yellow corn, yum, and brown cookies. Wow, that looks like a delicious and colorful feast. And that's the end. So, let's do... A little rhyme. Let's wiggle our fingers a little bit. We'll sing a song that goes like this. Pick the blueberry, pick the blueberry that was growing in the sun. Make a sun. Then I washed it and I ate it. Then I picked another one. Let's pick some more berries, okay? Pick the strawberry, pick the strawberry that was growing in the sun. Then I washed it and I ate it. Then I picked 
picked another one. Let's try some more berries. Picked a blackberry, picked a blackberry that was growing in the sun. Then I washed it and I ate it. Then I picked another one. Let's try one more kind of berry. Um, let me think, what other berries are there? Oh, I know. Picked a whortleberry, picked a whortleberry, picked that was growing in the sun. Then I washed it and I ate it and I picked another one. Yes, whortleberries are a real thing. I was once flipping through the dictionary and found that word. It's true. Look it up and you can find all that, all, ugh, find out all about whortleberries. And now we are going to read another book that I've actually been wanting to read for a very long time to you guys. This is called Blueberries for Sal, and it is the ultimate book about exploring while picking berries. Written and illustrated by Robert McCloskey and published by Viking Press. Let's find the first page. Here we go. One day, little Sal went with her mother to Blueberry Hill to pick blueberries. Little Sal brought along her small tin pail, and her brother brought her large tin pail to put berries in. We will take our berries home and can them, said her mother, and then we will have food for winter. Little Sal picked three berries and dropped them in her little tin pail. Kaplink, kaplink, kaplunk. She picked three more berries and ate them. Then she picked more berries and dropped one in the pail. Kaplunk. And the rest she ate. Then little Sal ate all four blueberries out of her pail. Her mother walked slowly through the bushes, picking blueberries as she went and putting them in her pail. Little Sal struggled along behind, picking blueberries and eating every single one. Little Sal hurried ahead and dropped a blueberry in her mother's pail. It didn't sound complete because the bottom of the pail was already covered with berries. She reached down inside to get her berry back. And though she didn't really mean to, she pulled out a large handful because there were so many blueberries right up close to the one that she had put in. Blueberries are hard to resist. So her mother stopped picking and said, Now, Sal, you run along and pick your own berries. Mother wants to take her berries home and can them for winter. Her mother went back to her picking, but little Sal, because her feet were tired of standing and walking, sat down in the middle of a large clump of bushes and ate blueberries. <laughs> On the other side of Blueberry Hill, Little Bear came with his mother to eat blueberries. Little Bear, she said, eat lots of berries and grow big and fat. We must store up food for the long, cold winter. Little Bear followed behind his mother as she walked slowly through the bushes eating berries. Little Bear stopped now and then to eat berries. And then he had to hustle along to catch up. Because his feet were tired of hustling, he picked out a large clump of bushes and sat down right in the middle and ate blueberries. <laughs> Over on the other side of the hill, little Sal ate all of the berries she could reach from where she was sitting, and then she started out to find her mother. She heard a noise from around a rock and thought, <gasps> That must be my mother walking along. Do you think that's who that is? I wonder what that noise is. But it was a mother crow and her children, and they stopped eating berries and flew away singing, cow, cow, cow. Then she heard another noise in the bushes and thought, that is surely my mother, and I will go that way. Is that a good idea? Let's see. She was.
was trampling along, eating berries and thinking about storing up food for the winter. And little Sal tramped right along behind. By this time, little Bear had eaten all the berries he could reach without moving from his clump of bushes. Then he hustled off to catch up with his mother. He hunted and hunted, but his mother was nowhere to be seen. He heard a noise from over the stump and thought, that is my mother walking along. But it was a mother partridge and her children. A partridge is a little brown bird. They stopped eating berries and hurried away. Then he heard a noise in the bushes and thought, that is surely my mother. I will hustle that way. What do you think? Is that little bear's mother? Let's see. But it was little Sal's mother instead. She was walking along, picking berries and thinking about canning them for next winter. Little bear hustled right along behind. Little bear and little Sal's mother and little Sal and little bear's mother were all mixed up with each other among the bushes on Blueberry Hill. Oh no, do you think the mothers and the children are going to find the right person? Let's see. Little Bear's mother heard Little Sal walking along behind and thought it was Little Bear. And she said, Little Bear, eat all that you can possibly hold. Little Sal said nothing. She picked three berries and dropped them ka-plink, ka-plink, ka-plunk into her small tin pail. Little Bear's mother turned around to see what on earth could make a noise like kaplunk. She cried, choking on a mouthful of berries. <gasps> Look at those surprised eyes. This is not my child. Where is Little Bear? She took one good look and backed away. She was old enough to be shy of people, even a very small person like Little Sal. Then she turned around and walked off very fast to hunt for Little Bear. Little Sal's mother heard Little Bear tramping along behind, and she thought it was Little Sal. She kept right on picking and thinking about canning blueberries for next winter. Little Bear padded up and peeked into her pail. He, of course, he only wanted to taste a few of what was inside, but there were so many, and they were so close together that he tasted a tremendous mouthful by mistake. <gasps> Now, Sal, said little Sal's mother, without turning around, you run along and pick your own berries. Mother wants to can these for next winter. Little Bear tasted another tremendous mouthful <gasps> and almost spilled the entire pail of blueberries. Little Sal's mother turned around and gasped. My goodness, you know little Sal. Where, oh, where is my child? Little Bear just sat, munching and munching and swallowing and licking his lips. <coughs> little Sal's mother slowly backed away. She was old enough to be shy of bears, even very small bears like Little Bear. And then she turned and walked away quickly to look for little Sal. Only got to turn one page at a time. So anyways, little Sal's mother hadn't gone very far before she heard a ka-plink, ka-plink, ka-plunk. She knew just what made that kind of noise. Little Bear's mother had not hunted very long before she heard a hustling sound that stopped now and then to munch and swallow. She knew just what made that kind of noise. Little Bear and his mother went home down one side of hill, Blueberry Hill, eating blueberries all the way and full of food stored up for next winter. And little Sal and her mother went down the other side of Blueberry Hill, 
picking blueberries all the way, and they drove home with food to camp for next winter. A whole pail of blueberries and three more besides. That's a lot of blueberries. How many do you think you could eat? Okay, and that's the end. See, this one last picture of little Sal and her mother storing up their blueberries for winter. And that's the end. So, I am going to share some fun stuff with you guys on our Facebook page and on our website. And I will see you again soon. Have a good day.